All right, well, hello, everybody. Uh, as you see, we're not in the 182 today. We're in an experimental Vans RB12. And if you haven't noticed, that's not Janus. Weather observation one yeah, three, some, uh, zero, three. Zulu weather. RPM. Zero at four. Visibility one zero. One thousand nine hundred scattered. Four thousand eight hundred scattered. Temperature one six Celsius. Dew point one three. Altimeter two nine eight six. Alrighty, things look good. let my oil temperature get up to 125 before I depart. Yeah, I don't even taxi till mine's right at about 85 or 90 and then uh, cycle the prop. I like to be pretty close to 100. No cycling here. Yeah. Ah, oh, looky here. Was that a little Cessna 400? Or yeah, a Columbia? Looks like it might be. Yeah, there yeah. is a Columbia over here. I mean, it was the same thing. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I see one set out here sometimes. Boy, it's dead this morning, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. That's been a while since I've been out of this airport. Don't have to cycle no prop here. Yeah, well, you only got one, could, you don't even have a mixture, so this is all FADEC then, correct? Yes, yeah, all FADEC, yeah. All right. I got two, two different computers, two different complete systems, redundant. Yeah. And I've got an uh, alternate bus feed that like if my master went off, I got two uh, alternators. Yeah. Uh, if my, my master went off, I can still feed back from the battery through another rep, route. Yeah. I just run on one system at a time. Then it's got like a vehicle, you got to check ECU in yeah. the night, so. All right, cool deal. It's a nice panel. It's pretty simple. You don't even, I don't even do a run up. Oh, you don't? You don't have to with this one. It's a, you know, as soon as you uh, give it, you know, just like your car. You get yeah. in and go. No magnetos. Get the operating temperature and take off, right? I guess the traffic will be a 7 November Romeo uh, on the road, taking runway 1 to 8. Uh, we'll be departing a uh, pattern to the south. That's a pretty little plane. That's a nice plane, sir, boy. I, it's it's a shame that Cessna didn't it is. That really is. work that plane because oh. it's faster than the Cirrus. That's a nice plane. And uh, they just didn't quite promote it well enough, I don't yeah. think. Yeah, I was really surprised when they dropped that, but they just weren't getting the sales. The Cirrus Man. was getting all the sales. Well, Cirrus is has got the market cornered on how they promote and how they They'll bring a plane to you for, for a demo. They're, they're just really great about doing that. And, you know, Cessna, I think, sometimes kind of sits on their coattails or their laurels a little bit and just expects everybody to come to them. Well, sometimes you got to do it the other way around. Augusta, experimental 8 floor Romeo Victor, entering 1 8, departing south, Augusta. Don't see any traffic. All right. Oh, goodness. A little rougher than I remember it used to be. Well, they're supposed to redo it.
Man, she takes off quick. Well, it's, uh... Y'all try it solo. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Makes a difference. Well, I guess yeah. in a lighter plane, it would make a huge difference, wouldn't That's it? That's what it is, yeah. The lighter the plane is, the, well, really, the less power they have. Yeah. Your airplane. Oh. You're going to have just a little heavy wing on the right right now because uh, we'll climb out at 75 to 85. It's fine. Oh, okay. Okay. It's about 3,500. Oh, this feels weird. I'm not used to center stick. I'm not used to being on the right side either. <laughs> that right side is uh, way different. Well, let's just go to 3,000. We can see a little more. Going to try to go down to Claremore this weekend, uh, meet up with another YouTube subscriber. Um, but as you see, it's uh, weather doesn't look all that great going to the south here. Oh, I need to uh, fix you up here. Oh yeah, that's a little bit, it's yeah, kind of... I wasn't even thinking. Oh, you're fine, you're fine. Yeah, no mixture, no prop. Of course, the prop would be nice to have, really. Oh man, she feels really good. I was, uh... Yeah, you do some, uh... All right, trim up just a hair here. Man, she really handles not it you just barely breathe on that stick. Yeah, I'm just like this, you know, just two fingers on the way I fly. Yeah. Alright, well hello everybody. Uh, as you see we're not in the 182 today. We're in an experimental Vans RV twelve. And if you haven't noticed, that's not Janice. <laughs> this is Larry, he is the owner and builder of this R V twelve. And uh, the plans were to go to uh, Claymore today and visit up with Jeff, a YouTube subscriber down in Claymore, Oklahoma. Uh, but weather just kind of doesn't look all that great. So Larry hollered at me, wanted to know if I kind of wanted to take a little ride in his RV-12. And I'm not willing to turn down an offer like that. And uh, I'm just going to let Larry kind of explain to you what he did and how long it took him to build it and what his avionics are. And we'll just kind of go from there. Well, it took me about six years, and that's a long time for RV-12, but it's, uh, I went EAB instead of ELSA. Yeah. So I did a lot of it myself. Uh, the whole firewall for it is different. I put a UL Power uh, FADEC engine in it, which is an air-cooled uh, four-cylinder, and the uh, normal engine for this is a Rotex 912 ULS. Uh, at the time, Rotax did not have a uh, FADEC engine, and I just wanted one because I know how my car runs. And yeah. I start it and it goes, it never gives me a problem. So that's what I wanted. And yeah. now Rotax does have a uh, FADEC engine, which is a uh, good engine. Now, the Jabiru Cal, is that an aftermarket to the aftermarket, or is that something special? Uh, well, Jabiru is another brand of uh, uh, airplane. Jabiru is from, uh, I believe, Australia is where they're... Oh, okay. You know. So, and uh, that was the one that would... Closest look, or the closest fit that I could get without doing a, you know, basically designing my own. Right. And uh, over in Tennessee is where they, they were based in Jabiru, USA. So they shipped me a cow and I went to work on it, cutting and trimming and gluing and fiberglassing and building and finally got it done, but there was another person going to build a cow and I waited about two years for that before I started on my own. Right. And I was about three months on mine when I finally got it and got with the program. So it turned out really well. Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful plane, so... Uh, sure, uh, sure does yeah, fly yeah, nice. Yeah, I, well, you know, it, for, for a small, lightweight plane, or an LSA, I think is what yeah. this is, Yeah. Uh, I was thinking it would be uh, 
a little uh, less smooth of a flight. Now, it could just be the day, but... This is a smooth day. Yeah, this is really nice. I mean, I am barely touching the controls on this thing. It's very responsive, almost like a little sports car. Yeah. Yeah, it's more like you just kind of think where you want to turn and you turn. <laughs> yeah. Up and down, same way, you know, just kind of just a little bit. So. But I enjoyed the build. So six years, right? Yes. And, and some people build them in one year. You know, they put them together and they're flying. Yeah. Now you did not do a, a fast build. You did it. You did it from scratch, correct? Right. They they don't have a quick build. Okay. Okay. On this particular model. Okay. I knew on the RB10 they did. Right. And the, the seven and the nines and the eights have a quick build kit. Okay. Quick build wings. But these wings, you know, go together and. Week's time, you can have the wings built. <laughs> yeah. It's that fast, really. Well, I guess uh, if I win the RB10 at AOPA, that that's as fast as a build as I could get, correct? It would be a very fast build. Yeah. yeah, well, Larry and I've kind of got a little banter going over who's going to win it first. He says if he wins it, he'll sell it to me. And, uh, you know, I, I just kind of go, well, that's not going to happen because I'll win it. <laughs> Odds are neither one of us will. But, yeah. uh, I've never won anything yet, so. Yeah, well, you're like me. I don't win anything, yeah. so. Yeah, I did get a nice hat today. Well, you know, and, you know, I, I, I hate to say this, but I think, you know, you look pretty sporting in that par for the course hat. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you know, a little swag goes a long way into making yeah. people look good. I'll, I'll take anything I can get, too. Yeah. <laughs> And there's downtown Augusta right below us. Yeah, this is going to be a little short flight today. Larry uh, finally got him an appointment to get his hair cut. Is that what? That is correct. Right over here at Augusta. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. Well, uh, Sunday was uh, about two and a half months since I've flown. And needless to say, my first couple of landings were a little on the rusty side. <laughs> this this plane is probably the easiest plane there is to land. Oh, is it? It's very, very easy. Now, what's uh, your typical mission profile for this airplane? What do you typically do? Uh, me and the wife, we just fly a lot. Just, okay. go, just go out and fly, and then we'll take trips in it. Yeah. Uh, fly somewhere. Uh, we went to uh, uh, Florida in the January. And we had a couple other trips planned, uh, one to Detroit, and uh, but that didn't work out because of the coronavirus. Right. And my next really major trip is planning for a triple tree uh, fly-in in, in South Carolina. Okay. Uh, I used to fly a lot to Dallas uh, for skydiving. Okay. And uh, I've since uh, Giving up my skydiving career. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I sold my gear in uh, February. Uh, just getting, having too much fun flying now. And yeah. Skydiving wasn't near as much fun anymore as because uh, somebody else bought the place out and things change, you know, and life goes on. Right. So I just sold my gear and uh, full time pilot. Yeah. So uh, long trips on this, pretty comfortable? They are, very comfortable. Yeah. It's not as fast, you know. We, we normally cruise 110 to 115 through. Yeah. Uh, in route. Well, that's kind of comparable to a 172 then, right? Pretty much the older ones, yeah. Yeah. I guess some of the newer ones have a bigger engine in them. I don't know if it's because it's a smooth day, but this thing flies nice. All our all our V's are just, uh, like I say, they, they say they're just an uh, extension of you. Yeah. Well, I can believe it because, uh, well, number one, it's different because I've never flown a stick uh -huh. and uh, or a center stick. And then number two, I've never flown on the right side before. Uh, but, man, this thing is really nice. I did, some, I did a landing one time from the right side in this plane and had some crosswind that day. I did not like it one bit. Oh, really? Yeah. Was it from the being on the right side or the crosswind? It, it's from both. Yeah. Yeah. This really doesn't like crosswinds too well. This plane. Yeah. Uh, I my max that I've found is uh, 
we had uh, 16 direct and uh, 19, or 21 gus yeah. over at Iola. And uh, I set her down with me and the wife in it, uh, but I just decided that was max. And that's really over what uh, recommended is. It's yeah. uh, uh, 14 direct Yeah, is what the uh, book says. Four, 14 direct crosswind? Right. Yeah. And we have we 16, 21 gus. Yeah. Uh, but you got to do things different, you know. Uh, the, the biggest issue with the crosswind on this one is uh, forget the flaps. Yeah. Know? Bring her in faster. Just, just bring it in. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, even the 182 I fly, the max demonstrated is 15 knots, uh, yeah. and I'm comfortable with that. Although I have, I have landed at 25 direct crosswind, okay. and uh, you know, I don't, I don't care what anybody says. It, it, it gets a little. I don't want to say squirrely, but you, you've got to really be on it. Yeah. And of course, you know, we live in Kansas. We're we always have winds of some sort. Yeah. My gosh, this thing's almost like it's on autopilot. I've just barely touched this thing and I'm within 20 or 40 feet of 3,000. They're a hoot to fly. Just That's what's, what's nice about it, having a, a little small plane is you, anytime you want to go fly, you just pull it out and go. Yeah, you know? yeah. So what's the fuel burn on this, typical? Four and a half to five. Four, four and a half to five, my gosh. Yeah. And when I'm up at, you know, if I'm at 6,500 6, or so cruising, I, I get 4.3. Four, 4.3? Three. Four, three. Yeah. Good night. So, so you just go fly anytime you want. Yeah, I mean, good gosh, with, with that, I guess you, you don't have to worry about getting uh, 91 automotive fuel then too much. You got that kind of range. How much fuel you hold? I, I hold uh, 20. Yeah. And then, I, then uh, if I'm on a longer trip, uh, a lot of times, like when I go to Dallas, I, I put in a six and a half gallon pump tank and I could pump it over during the uh, en route. Oh wow. That way I could fly down and back without any uh, without having to fuel up anywhere, you know. Right. So on long trips I'll put it in there. And yeah. So 20 gallons. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> when I'm down to 20 gallons I'm sweating <laughs> it in my <laughs> I'm like oh I gotta get a place to go land. <laughs> yeah. There's the prison over there. Yeah. Yeah, the El Dorado correctional prison's right off of our about two o'clock there. And then El Dorado Airport's just uh, south of there. Now, do you use the autopilot much or is it just on long trips? I use it quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, especially up for altitude hole when we're just out flying, you know, we're just, yeah. I'm just looking around and we just meandering around that way it keeps it on altitude and I don't have to uh, spend the time looking at that part yeah yeah on long trips I just put it on autopilot again I'm just really amazed how how steady she holds altitude and heading and I barely touched the rudder and you you kind of said even when we were taking off I said oh you won't use because I was going well that's a little bit of a stretch for my feet for the rudders and you kind of looked at me and said, oh you won't use them much no, <laughs> just on landing you know that's when I really use them and when I built the plane, that's another reason I went EAB at the time. Uh, Rotax only has a 15-amp uh, alternator, I believe. Right. And it just wasn't enough capacity for all the electronic stuff I was putting in here. And, uh, Vans did not offer the second screen at that time either, so... Right. I wanted... Well, my wife wanted another screen over for yeah. herself. And uh, I needed more alternator power, so... This, this engine, I've got two 30 amp alternators. I just run on one, and when I need the other one, I'll put it on. Right. I test it, you know, all yeah. the time. Well, I tell you, the uh, run up or lack thereof <laughs> was, uh, that was, that was really different. Yeah, most people have pilots that get in here and say, what? <laughs> well, it's just a uh, bay deck engine and yeah. All the uh, electronic ignition, of course, uh, fuel injection, and all. It's uh, there's no need for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the mag checks and all of that. I mean, that's you know, and I've had a, a mag check fail sure. on me before. Sure. And, and a plug, you know, yeah. give out at the higher RPM. Yeah. But this, it's like I say, just like your car, you get in it and go. Get in it and go. Yeah. 
Well, I know there's, you know, the 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 push for a lot of the next gen aircraft is trying to get everything to go to FADEC. Uh, yeah. But I, I don't. You know, aviation is real slow to come around. Well, especially on uh, uh, certified aircraft. Yeah. It, it's just real slow to come around. Yeah, I'm really surprised that they're allowing the experimental type uh, avionics in uh, certified aircraft now, but you, you can put these in a uh, Cessna 182 now, this uh, Dynon. Right. So, but they, they've proven themselves, uh, you know, to be more reliable than the old steam gauges. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, you know, I learned on steam, like, like probably most people, uh, although, you know, we're getting to the day and age where that's going to be kind of a, a dinosaur, so to speak, will, yes. or, or, or extinct. Uh, but the transition from steam to, to glass uh, was was pretty smooth. And, it was, and, and, and immediate. Yeah. Me. But I I, uh, I wanted to get my complex endorsement not too long ago, and I did it in a Mooney, and I, the Mooney I was flying had steam gauges. Okay. And I have to tell you, I, uh, I, I, it was, it was hard, and yeah. uh, my CFII, you know, put me under the hood too, just for test. Uh, I was all over the place, yeah. I, I, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I, I was lost without my glass, yes. and uh, uh, you know, the glass cockpits. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, kind of, you know, look down on them, but I mean, any, to me, anything you can do to make flying safer and less complicated. Is is better? Yeah. Experimental world, it's kind of flipped the other way. They're they're going to unless it's like in a uh, a Cub or something like that. That type of aircraft, you know. Right. Everybody wants uh, flat screens. They they don't want no uh, steam gauges anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, your your layout is gorgeous. I love it. It is really really nice. Well, there's the first bump I felt since yeah. we've been flying. Yeah. That a little grass field down here, or is it? It's not showing up on the screen here, so it must not be. Yeah, it sure looks like you could land the plane there. It does, don't it? Yeah. I wonder what that is. Now, I take it you don't land on grass very often in this. I used to, but I don't anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will if it's a, a known... Uh, Yeah, well, actually, that's kind of how Larry and I met up, was he landed on a, a grass field somewhere and uh, tore up one of his wheel pants. I did. And uh, he's uh, hangar mates with uh, the Pekinax, who I fixed their wheel pants for him. And uh, so he brought it over, and we, we glassed her on back up. Good as new. Right yeah, my wire, and I was so picky on it. People come over, and friends of mine, they just marvel at the way every wire is just, they're all just bundled perfect, just. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I tell you what, uh, you did a great build. Everything looks very clean, and, and I mean, it's just really, really nice. Thank you, Ron. We, sure, we certainly enjoy flying it, yeah. going places. A lot of a lot of places to go eat, you know, eat breakfast or dinner somewhere. Yeah. We got a lot of those under the belt. Boy, there is a layer. It is. It's, it's come down, hasn't it? Yeah, it has come down a lot. Well, we were at 3,000 feet. Now I'm at 25, 2,400. Just make sure we stay below it. Well, at this... Uh, well, you just got to stay clear of clouds, right? Yeah. We in class G now. Yeah. You know, a little overcast day like this, this is kind of nice flying low. Yeah. There's the quarry. Butler Quarry. Sierra 9706 Lima on the right downwind to runway 1A. We'll depart the pattern to the northeast.
Augusta, Municipal Airport, still be going the automated same way. weather observation. One, three, four, three. Zulu, weather, wind, zero, niner, zero, at four. Visibility, one, zero, two, thousand, scattered, four, thousand, scattered, ceiling, five, thousand, broken. Five Temperature, thousand broken. one, seven. <laughs> What's seven, that? Two five point, thousand one, broken. Four, L, yeah, I don't think this is niner, five thousand eight, broken. Eight, Augusta traffic, 8-4 room over victory is 5 miles south for 3-6 straight in Augusta. Your airplane? Yeah, my airplane. Your airplane. Okay. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to film you. Augusta, 8-4 room over victory, uh, 2 south straight in, 3-6 Augusta. Augusta traffic, 8 4 Romeo Victor, final 3 6, Augusta. Land this thing in thousand feet pretty easy, couldn't you? Oh, hey, you can do it. Of course, I I stayed on the run. I don't like flying, uh, getting too far down below the hill there. Yeah, well, this has a steep steep incline on that end. my plane up. Pretty sure. simple. Man, I tell you what, this plane's a lot of fun. They are fun. A person needs two planes. Well, you know, I hate to admit to that, but I think you're right. A person should have two planes. <laughs>